So, uh, Glenn, you have uh, rejoined the band after Sorry? some time that you were away. Yeah. We did the 10 years of Blitzkrieg EP and now you're back in the band, so how come? Uh, basically because Brian asked me to come back. <laughs> I've been um, playing with a band called Anasazi for about a year with Mark, the drummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian gave me a phone call and asked me to come back and decided it was the best thing to do. So, just went with it. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Martin, what did you do before you joined? Oh, my first real band was Rat and Rock. We were also on Neat Now. Black metal band? Yeah. Um, after that, I was in a band with Glenn for a while, which is the predecessor of uh, Anasazi, a band called The Sacred. Um, and I kind of took a holiday for about a year and started doing real work. Uh -huh. <laughs> and too much. I got asked to do an audition <laughs> for this great. Um, yeah. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, Blitzkrieg have got a new album out. Mm -hmm. It's called The uh, Mists of Avalon, which is probably taken from the novel by uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I was. I was. I read that book, and I was very impressed with it. And I've read um, many of the different accounts of the Arthurian legend, and um, I thought that uh, if anything was going to be anywhere near the truth, then I thought that the uh, the Marion Bradley novel was probably it, so um, I wrote the songs based on that. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, five songs linked together yeah. in a concept? In a concept, yeah. It's a mini, co a mini concept yeah. album, um, yeah. which is something that we've been walk working towards. Um, I think since I last spoke to you, I, I, I may have even mentioned it then. So it was an idea that I'd had then, and uh, as soon as we started, you know, me and, me and Glenn started working on the ideas, uh, immediately, and um, the rest, as they say, is history. It's there. Uh, and Glenn did some really nice, fine pieces to link the, the songs together. Uh, Thank you very strings, much. No problem. Um, so the strings link, link the, the pieces together, and it's, it's, it's probably one of our finest albums, I guess. Yeah. It seems to me that the uh, other band members were uh, more involved in the songwriting. Uh, because in some older albums you got most of the credits, but this time uh, in some songs that you are not even mentioned. Yeah, um, they tied me up and put me in a cupboard so that I couldn't write anything. <laughs> I, I, I was keen to get as many people involved in the writing process as possible, because for quite some time, it was about 11 years, um, it was just me and Tony, and we wrote basically everything. So I was keen to get as many different ideas together as possible, and um, Mark wrote some really good ideas and we, we started to work on it and Martin wrote some as well. Um, and it was just it was just nice to have as many people writing as possible without the pressure of, of having a whole thing to think about when it was still a bit of a pressure as it was anyway because of the time um, that was allocated to the album. Because originally the, the, the release date wasn't until October. And we wouldn't have been starting to record until I think it was September the, that was here marked for. But because of this festival, um, we were obviously keen to come over and, and um, promote a product that was, was new and involved the new members of the band rather than promote something that had already been done. Well, um, for anybody out there that's not heard of Doctor Who, I strongly suggest you immediately find out about the guy because the man is cool. <laughs> um, and if, if you need anybody to sort of uh, be the next Doctor Who, I'm your man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, I, I, write, I write lyrics about things that, um, that I know about and um, subjects that interest me. So, uh, you know, I've been a Doctor Who fan all my life. Um, so so I, good Doctor Who, actually. I probably would make a good Doctor Who, yeah. If they could uh, calm me down a little bit, perhaps. It's just pick terrible, like, can you? <laughs> <laughs> the, question, the question is who's going to be your assistant, though, that's the thing, isn't it? Doral Pesh. Yeah. Doral Pesh. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be her assistant. <laughs> I'm just going to see you not get me to wear a dress. <laughs> Anything he says from now on will be censored. <laughs> <laughs> Try to utilize a lot of different ideas this time, guitars, guitars and drums wise. Um, go for different melody structures rather than sticking to a 
kind of A to Z formula of heavy metal, you know. And uh, I think end result is basically what we set out to do. We're very happy with it. Well, compared to uh, Unholy Trinity, there's a few more ballads and a few more yeah. hymnical songs, like Nations Divided, or not, yeah. but not the uh, real power stuff, like After Dark, for yeah. example. It's not as heavy as Unholy Trinity. Is it uh, deliberately? It's not deliberate. It's just, um, I mean, obviously, with Tony Little not being in the band, I mean, his influence was there for Un Unholy Trinity. And the, the way Mists of Avalon turned out was because of the effort of the whole band, you know? So there is that aspect to it, definitely. Still Blitzkrieg. Okay. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm going to check out another interview. I mean, that's about as heavy as it's going to get. And I, I could tell you that the working title for that song was going to do. Fast as something. Fast as something, yes. Not fast as a shark, it was as fast as something else. That rhymes with duck, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you guys come up with a riff and uh, he's got his lyrical ideas or uh, does he, does you, do you get his lyrics and try to uh, create some music to it? What do you usually do? It's generally the lyrics still popped up this song. We try and write the, the riffs and stuff with an idea of, you know, drums and bass and whatever all going together. Uh, Mark writes guitar riffs, you know, which is excellent. See, he just gives you a tape and he says go away and run that in for the jump pass. Um, and it's, it's a case of doing with the, the lyrics. Sometimes you can just work out when you're rehearsing as well, when you're just jamming in the studio and that. That, that, can, that can be very good. Very spontaneous, yeah. Right? Yeah, get the, the power and the energy that you require and just go for it, you know? Mm. Brian was like, say, Blitz Creek was only written in four minutes. Yeah. Did you already play a show after the new album came out, or is uh, the festival going to be the first appearance now? The, the festival is the first real appearance. We actually played a, um, a gig in Washington um, as a warm-up for this. Um, in England? In England, yeah, in my hometown. So it was just something that we thought, well, we'll do this, and 20 people came to see it, and 20 people went away thoroughly disgusted, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> No, I think they enjoy it. I think they enjoy it. It was um, we don't we don't sort of go down well in England. It's not uh, it's no not kind of band does really. No, no. Um, so we're kind of used to that. And it's uh, again I've said it before. Um, I would rather be accepted in the rest of the world and virtually unknown in England than the other way around. I really don't care about England too, too much in that respect because it's, I, I guess they don't, they're, they're too interested in easily accessible music and, and the importance of a, of a beat that just about takes your head off, you know. It's very, very media led England. Yeah. Very, very much led by the press. Yeah. It's just poppy boy bands, isn't it? Yeah. Girl bands. Boy bands, girl bands, spice girls, Shit. boy zone, bollocks like that, basically. <laughs> Spice Girls. Beep! <laughs> <laughs> the Spice Girls. Okay. Spice Girls. I must, I must say, um, from the, the experience we've had in Germany so far, the uh, scene over here for the rock and the metal bands is much better than what it is in England. Quite my boy. Germany's an absolutely brilliant place to be, you know? It's great kind of music. Well, it's excellent. We've always done pretty well here. Yeah. It's wonderful to see so many people into the music that you love, you know? It's great. Yeah. It was quite healthy in the 80s for, um, for heavy metal, um, no, no. because I, th I think at that point the kids had really had, had enough, um, and the, the, punk, the, sort of the punk explosion sort of laid the way for the, for the metal to sort of happen after it, and it was a really healthy time. But we don't have that sort of uh, thing going at the moment, because the record companies and the magazines um, want something that's very accessible and very quick. And it's throwaway pop, basically. We presume they strangled hold on the, uh, yeah. the music industry, really. Whereas the 80s was a very free time and people could do what they wanted to do and what people wanted to listen to. The record companies had to listen yeah. because it was selling so well and the, the you know, uh, concerts were were there and people were going to them. And it was, but now it's um, it's not quite the same. I mean, so half of these bands they'll do, they'll do a single, 
Um, I mean, is it really them on the single anyway? Well, you never see them live anyway, so you're never going to. But at least we can go out there and we'll play the songs, and you know that it's us. <laughs>